Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and as usual I have just a couple of announcements and the first one is um, we are looking for women who want to start an Operation Healthy Girlfriend chapter. And um, this is just fun. If you like to share the message of good health and informed decision making and eating better and healthier lifestyles with friends, this is a great way to do it and enjoy more social time with your girlfriends and also more learning time with the people who you like spending time with. So if you want some information on how to do this, we're starting chapters all over the country, just send me an email at pampopper at msn.com and I'll put you in touch with Dr. Lana Contos, the founder of Operation Healthy girlfriend and she can talk to you more about what's involved and how it can benefit you and how to get started. It really doesn't take that much time. It's a great opportunity for you to even earn a little bit of extra income, which most people could use a little bit of, and, um, and to help a lot of other people in the process. And then I have to, of course, remind everybody we're just a few weeks away from our conference in November. This is a big one for us. It's 20 years in business. I think that's kind of a big deal to celebrate. And we have the top people in the healthcare industry coming here. Uh, Dr. T. Colin Campbell, author of China Study, is going to give a very thought-provoking talk on why isn't nutrition a medical specialty? And I think that's a question we all should be asking now that we know what a profound effect nutrition has on health. Dr. Peter Bregan, the famous psychiatrist from Ithaca, will be here to deliver a couple of lectures on drug-free psychiatry and, um, and how the right type of therapy should be delivered. Dr. Neil Bar Barnard from the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. We have and Dr. Tom Seyfried, who is the author of a great medical textbook called Cancer is a Metabolic Disease. Very long list of speakers. The food is great. Of course, spending time with us, how could you not love that, right? So um, November 4th through 6th, and you can go to our website at wellnessfarmhealth.com. Got a little video explaining more about what goes on at conference, but uh, you do not want to be home in wherever you live November 4th through 6th while we all post on social media what a great time we're having and you look at the sumptuous food and wish you were with us. So just go on ahead, book your reservations, get your ticket, and make sure you join us in November. All right, so today I want to talk about folate and folic acid. Lots of confusion about this. It's something I've been getting a lot of emails about. And one of the reasons is because of this silly genetic testing that a lot of the functional medicine doctors do to identify the MTHFR gene mutation. I'm not going to go into all of that here. There's a very well-referenced article in the Health Race Library about the MTHFR gene mutation, but this folic acid issue comes up uh, as a result of that, and that's where the email, that's where a lot of the emails come from. So, here's the story. Folate is part of the B family group of vitamins. It's found naturally in foods like green vegetables, fruit, liver, and yeast. Folic acid, on the other hand, is a synthetic form of folate, which is an ingredient in, diet, in dietary supplements and fortified foods. Most people have been taught to believe that folic acid and folate are essentially the same thing, and if you can't get enough folate from fruits and vegetables, just take folic acid pills or a multivitamin with folic acid and all will be well. But that's really not true because folic acid and folate function differently in the body. Dietary folate from food is converted in the intestine to something called 5-methyltetrahydrofolic acid, or 5-MTHF. And this is the form of folate that enters the bloodstream and circulates throughout the body. Folic acid, on the other hand, is methylated in the gut mucosa before being converted to 5-MTHF. Now, the body has a limited capacity to convert folic acid to 5-MTHF. I got it. Okay. <laughs> the body has a limited capacity to convert folic acid to 5-MTFH, and as a result, unmetabolized folic acid has been found in circulation when oral intake exceeds a certain amount. This unmetabolized folic acid is processed and eventually eliminated by the liver. Observational studies have shown that increased folate intake is associated with lower risk of neural tube defects, lower risk of cardiovascular disease, cancer, and age-related cognitive decline. Now this has caused some experts to believe that folic acid supplements and foods fortified with folic acid will result in lowered risk as well. And of course the uh, party line is always it's a whole lot easier to get people to eat fortified junk foods and take vitamin pills than it is to get them to eat green vegetables and fruit. 
Mandatory folic acid in the United States and Canada has been credited with reducing the incidence of neural tube defects by 28% in the United States and 46% in Canada. Now this sounds very impressive, but the data were reported in relative terms. And stated in absolute terms, the prevalence of neural tube defects actually fell from 1.58 per thousand births to 0.86 per thousand births, according to the Canadian data. This is a relative reduction of 46%, but a real reduction of 0.72%. So in other words, the risk is very, very low to begin with, and folic acid fortification lowers the risk by less than three quarters of 1%. One randomized trial showed that folic acid supplements improve cognitive function in older adults with low folate status and without B12 deficiency. And as with many drugs and supplements, uh, small and specific populations of people tend to benefit from them, but this cannot be translated into population-wide use of a drug or supplement because the same benefits don't apply to everybody. And the reason is that there are some risks associated with consuming too much folic acid, which include masking B12 deficiency. This can be quite serious since B12 deficiency, if it goes on for a long time, can result in irreversible neurological damage. And while studies did not confirm that folic acid reduces the risk of developing cancer, a few studies suggested that it might actually increase the risk. On the other hand, when you eat folate from foods, you don't have any of these problems. Now, one of the problems that comes up when you're trying to evaluate the evidence, and I found this while I was writing this paper and delivering, getting ready to deliver this talk today, is that um, when you're looking at the effect of folate and folic acid on health, folate from food and folic acid in supplements are metabolized differently, as I mentioned earlier, and many studies don't really distinguish between the two. But some observational studies have shown reasons for concern, and some studies have clearly identified risks associated with folic acid supplements. Now, before folic acid fortification became mandatory in both the United States and Canada, the incidence of colorectal cancer was decreasing. However, after mandatory fortification began, a significant increase in folate status was accompanied by a corresponding increase in the incidence of colorectal cancer. Now, this is an observational finding, and it's very important to make that clear. It does not prove a cause and effect relationship. It doesn't mean that we know for sure that folic acid supplementation increases the risk of colorectal cancer, but it's concerning. The aspirin folate polyp prevention study looked at the effect of folic acid when used to prevent the recurrence of colorectal polyps. Subjects were randomly assigned to take folic acid with or without aspirin, and five years after the trial began, those taking folic acid had more advanced lesions and a higher risk of invasive prostate cancer also. Studies looking at the effects of folic acid on cardiovascular disease have been mixed, with some showing no effect, some showing a marginal positive effect. One study showed harm, and another reported a small increase in the occurrence of colon and prostate cancer in the intervention group that was taking folic acid. And in one very concerning study, the folate after coronary intervention trial, patients who had stents and took folic acid daily had more narrowing of the arteries and increased risk of restenosis when compared to patients taking placebo. The tolerable upper limit for folic acid for intake for adults is considered 1,000 micrograms a day. Now, a combination of multivitamins and consumption of fortified foods, depending on your diet, can easily exceed that amount. The average amount in a supplement is 0.4 milligrams. One serving of fortified cereal contains about that same amount. And add to this just one serving each of fortified bread, pasta, pretzels, and cookies, which is not unusual in our society, and it's very easy to consume way too much folic acid. Consumed day after day, this amount of folic acid can result in very high serum levels of, of, um, of folate. Just 400 micrograms daily in a folic acid supplement is enough to cause detectable amounts of non-metabolized folic acid in the bloodstream. The problem is, here, and this goes on all the time, that widespread fortification of foods and the promotion of folic acid as part of multivitamins and even separate supplements was undertaken without adequate research to determine the possible side effects of this increased intake. The inconsistent results of many of the studies, and I've just highlighted a few here, some showing benefits, some showing harm, indicate that there may be some very specific populations of people who would benefit from folic acid supplementation, but we have not yet identified those populations for sure. 
So my advice to consumers like you is that you are highly unlikely to benefit from taking folic acid in pills, and it's best to avoid eating fortified foods, which are usually highly processed. Nutrition labels on these foods, as you probably know, looks good, not because the foods are actually nutritious, but because fortification makes highly processed foods appear to be nutritious and health promoting. It's very easy to obtain enough folate from food. In fact, if you go to any nutrient database and just look look at the content of um, green vegetables and fruits, you'll see that any of us who are consuming a plant-based diet are taking in plenty of folate. It's not anything that you have to worry about making supplements and fortified foods unnecessary. Okay, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you on Thursday with more news.